Alrighty guys, welcome to the skies of the Eastern Mediterranean for another definitive DCS FA-18C Hornet tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering both the autopilot and navigational systems of your copy of the DCS FA-18C. As of recent updates to the aircraft, these two systems have become inextricably linked and is the reason behind why we're making a single video covering both of these systems, and it will be the easiest and most efficient way for you guys to learn these systems and how they interact with each other. We're first going to cover the autopilot and its various modes and functions, then we'll move on to the navigational systems, and cover INS waypoint navigation along with ground-based TACAN navigation, before we move on to the autopilot coupled mode the system that integrates these two systems together. As I'm sure you guys found during your first daunting steps into the cockpit of the DCS FA-18C, there are a ton of things that we have to do all at once. We have to navigate, we have to fly in formation, we have to talk on the radios, we have to fuse and arm our weapons. We have to find targets through the soda straw field of view of our targeting pod. We have to scan for threats, both visually and the systems of our aircraft, like our raw equipment and radar. And we have to build and maintain a mental picture of all of the aircraft around us in the battle space to avoid threats and avoid a potential fratricide situation, along with a hundred other tactical and administrative tasks that we must perform in the cockpit to be both effective in combat and survive to fight another day. All of these tasks fall on one set of shoulders, one pair of eyeballs, and one brain in our single-seat FA-18C Hornet. But thankfully, there are a number of ways that we can reduce our pilot workload through the very extensive options available to us through the autopilot system of the FA-18. Before we get started, let's go ahead and bring up the HSI on our left EDI and turn on some internal cockpit lighting to make things a little bit easier for you guys to see on YouTube as we get later into the evening in this MIS file. The very first function of automation in our FA-18 is the most simple one, and that is the auto throttle system. Mapped by default to your T key on your keyboard, pressing this key at a desired airspeed, we'll bring up the ATC symbol on the right hand side of your HUD just underneath your altitude box. When this ATC symbology is solid, the aircraft will be maintaining your current airspeed very similarly to cruise control in your car. The aircraft will maintain that airspeed if you maneuver the aircraft gently around the airspace. If we increase our attitude, we can hear our GE F404 engines starting to spool up as it tries to maintain that selected airspeed. And as we level off and drop our velocity vector below the horizon, we can see and hear our GE F404 engines spooling down to maintain that airspeed as we start going downhill. As the pilot, one of the most frustrating things for new DCS F-18C pilots when trying to use the auto throttle system is they find the auto throttle automatically kicks off all the time. To avoid this, avoid moving your throttles as much as possible while the ATC system is turned on. Moving your throttles back towards idle or up towards full mill will cause ATC to start blinking, letting you know that it is no longer maintaining that airspeed due to manual movements of your throttle. If you do not press the T key or press the button that you've remapped to the throttle on your HOTAS to activate ATC, the symbology will disappear, letting you know that ATC is no longer active. Let's push the throttle back up and get back to 350 knots of indicated airspeed before we turn the auto throttles back on. 
One thing to note about the auto throttle in the FA18, it is not linked to your indicated airspeed, nor is it linked to your ground speed or true airspeed. It is actually linked to your Mach indicator. And so if you use your auto throttles to maintain a speed while making a steady climb, you will find that your indicated airspeed will drop at a rate of 2% per 1,000 feet of altitude climbed. So while your Mach will stay relatively the same, your indicated airspeed will drop. This is the source of a lot of confusion while using the auto throttles in your FA-18C Hornet. I have a video that explains the differences between indicated airspeed, ground speed, true airspeed, and Mach if you'd like to check that out in the link in the description down below. But let's go ahead and start talking about the various options available to us through the actual autopilot push dial on the UFC. Pressing the push dial will bring up a number of options on our ODU or option display unit. The simplest of these options is the very first one up top, ATTH or attitude hold. To turn on an autopilot function, all we need to do is press on the option select button on the left hand side of the ODU. A semicolon will appear just to the left hand side of the symbology for that option. That lets us know that that option is currently turned on. Attitude hold mode is like flying your aircraft with a very dampened out version of your FCS system in the FA-18. You can bank and increase the pitch or decrease the pitch. And wherever you let go of the stick, the aircraft will automatically maintain that attitude and bank, allowing you to fly hands off during a prolonged climb or a prolonged turning climb or prolonged turning descent. It would be a fantastic option to use if you're leading a formation of FA-18s an ATC or a GCI controller comes over the radio and tells you SPUD 1-1 flight climb and maintain 15,000 feet. At which point we would return climb to maintain 15,000 SPUD 1-1 in flight. Or something of that nature. So we'll go ahead and have our autopilot climb us up to 15,000 feet while maintaining our auto throttles turn on. We can see on our IV that we're almost at full military power thanks to our auto throttles, while our throttle itself, sitting in my hand, is in the very center of my throttle quadrant. Coming through 14,000, we'll start to bump the nose back down. And we can see that while our Mach indicator is more or less stationary, having climbed just a hair above 0.62 where we turn the auto throttles on, our indicated airspeed has dropped down precipitously. It seems to have matched up pretty nicely to that 2% per 1,000 feet of altitude climbed that we talked about earlier. So we'll just lower the altitude just a hair before we talk about the next autopilot option. The next autopilot option that we'll talk about today is B out or barometric altitude hold. This is relatively self explanatory as this option will maintain the currently selected altitude we're flying in our aircraft. To turn it on, all we need to do is press the option select button and make sure that we have the semicolon right next to where it says B out. Because it's kind of redundant to have both of these functions turned on on the autopilot, let's go ahead and turn off attitude hold. One of the most important things to know about using an autopilot in any aircraft, military or civilian, is how to turn off the autopilot quickly and effectively. Autopilots are not all-knowing robots. They simply maintain options selected by the pilot, and they can get you in trouble if you don't know how to turn them off quickly. One of the first things that a pilot is taught in real life is how to turn it off. We have two options for turning off the autopilot in the DCS FA-18C. We can use the autopilot slash nose wheel steering disconnect switch on our HOTAS. By pressing it, we can see the semicolon next to B-ALT has gone away. 
or in a more emergency type situation, say if we saw a MiG-21 coming around to get on our tail or a SAM launch down below us, we can violently move the throttle and stick to kick off both autopilot and our auto throttles to then continue with an invasive maneuver. So let's go ahead and get ourselves back up to 15,000 and Mach 0.63. R alt or radar altitude hold mode is the next option below B alt. Keep in mind that this is not a terrain following mode like you would find in say a F111 Aardvark or an A6 Intruder. Using radar altitude will maintain your current radar altitude above terrain but is not as high fidelity or as perfect as the terrain following modes in those two aircraft previously mentioned. So don't think that you can use it to fly through the mountains in zero zero conditions at night without smacking into the side of a hill. The next mode we'll talk about is heading select mode. Heading select mode is the first of the autopilot modes that require a little bit more work from you the pilot. Heading select will automatically fly the aircraft to the currently selected heading of the heading bug on your HSI. This symbol of the heading bug on the outside of the compass rows of your HSI looks very similar to a heading bug on any aircraft, both military and civilian. To move the heading bug, we can come down to the pedestal for our MPCD, and on the top left, we have the heading select switch, where we can move the heading bug by pressing and holding, and we can make fine adjustments to our heading selected in one degree increments by clicking on the heading select switch. We can see the currently selected heading on the bottom left of our HSI. Currently it's at 036 degrees. If pressing and holding and then clicking is too difficult or imprecise for what you need it to do, all we need to do is go to our ODU. After pressing and holding the heading or course select button, we should have a CSEL for course select and an HSEL for heading select. Press the option select button and input the heading that you desire. We entered 090 degrees and we can see our heading bug has automatically snapped to due east on our compass rows. To get back to our autopilot's functions, we simply press the A slash P push tile and on our option select button for heading select, we press it and the aircraft will automatically fly us to a heading of 090 degrees or wherever you placed that heading select bug. We're starting to get later into the evening and we're seeing some bloom up here on our HUD. So let's reduce our HUD brightness just slightly to make our symbology nice and crisp and easy to read. I highly recommend that you place your heading select bug on the heading that you desire to fly to before turning on your heading select option for your autopilot. The heading bug will automatically be placed at 360 degrees on startup of the aircraft. So turning on heading select without moving your heading bug first will automatically fly you to a heading of due north. The aircraft should start to roll out and bring us directly onto a heading of 090 degrees. We can see this reflected on our HSI by this vertical line up top, as well as the heading bug and the compass rose being perfectly at 090 degrees at the very top. This is reflected and we can cross check this on our HUD by using the little triangle carrot, which represents our aircraft's current heading against the heading tape at the very top of our HUD. So now that we're flying at a heading of 090, let's go ahead and talk about how to actually use the INS waypoint functions to navigate within 
our FA-18C. We have two options for navigation in the FA-18. We have waypoint navigation and we have TACAN navigation. We can also use ADF, but this is a function that's used by very few DCS World players, and if you guys do want me to make a tutorial covering this function, uh, leave me a comment in the comment section down below, and we'll consider it for the future. To get the jet to actually use waypoint navigation for both the autopilot coupled mode and display navigational symbology on the HSI and on your HUD, you want to box waypoint in the top right. We can use the up and down arrows down here to cycle through the various waypoints that we've created or were automatically loaded into the jet on mission start. Keep in mind that waypoint zero is always your start point in the DCS FA-18C, whether that's a cold start on the ground, a hot start on the ground, or an air start. But let's go ahead and navigate towards waypoint one. We can see in the top right here that we have waypoint information. The waypoint is currently at 126 degrees from our current position and is at a distance of 56.4 nautical miles. Keep in mind guys that this distance here is in ground track. We'll cover why that's important later on in the tutorial. The aircraft is also predicting it'll take 8 minutes and 10 seconds for us to reach that waypoint. Because the waypoint is now about 54.5 nautical miles. We're not going to see the waypoint symbology on our HSI because the scaling between the center of our aircraft to the outside of the compass rows is only at 40 nautical miles. We can adjust this scaling to show us our waypoint once the scale is larger than the distance shown to our waypoint. We can bring it out to a scale of 80 nautical miles and we can see the waypoint symbol, a dot with a circle around it. On the inside of the compass rows of our HSI, we can see a triangle with that same waypoint symbol, the dot with the circle around it, showing us the exact heading of our waypoint. This looks correct and we can cross check that with the exact heading that's shown in the top right. On our HUD with waypoint navigation selected, we can see we have the distance and the waypoint selected up on the bottom right of our HUD, as well as we have a new symbol on the heading tape. This vertical little bug shows us the exact heading of our waypoint, and we want to have this little vertical bug on the inside of our heading caret to make us be flying directly at our currently selected waypoint. So let's go ahead and fly towards our currently selected waypoint one. We'll go to our autopilot and we'll turn off our heading select so that way the aircraft will not fight us and try to fly towards our heading bug at 090 degrees. With barometric altitude hold turned on, the stick is now in what's called steering wheel mode, where all we have to do is simply bank the aircraft right and the aircraft will automatically try to maintain our currently selected altitude of 15,000 feet. We can see the aircraft undulating slightly in altitude. The autopilot is not absolutely perfect. Because we're changing the amount of lift in the vertical component by banking the aircraft, the jet has to automatically adjust on the fly to maintain our current altitude. And it's not absolutely perfect, but it's close enough to work for us today. As we start to get closer, once we're within about five degrees, we'll go ahead and start to roll the aircraft out. Now flying directly towards our waypoint. We can see this based off of the waypoint bug inside of our carrot in our heading tape on our HUD. And we can cross check that by seeing on our HSI that the vertical line denoting our heading and our waypoint heading symbol on the out inside of our compass rows is more or less lined up. I need a couple degrees to the right just to be absolutely perfect. Awesome. 
So with that, why don't we go ahead and turn on our TACAN systems. To turn on our TACAN systems, we simply need to press on the TCN or TACAN push tile. Press and hold the on off button for approximately one second. And we can see that we do not have a TACAN station locked or selected by these lines on the outside of our compass rows on our HSI spinning around. So let's go ahead and load in 107, enter for the TACAN station at RAF Akrotiri. We know that we have a TACAN station inputted and locked when we have the TACAN symbol appear on our HSI, as well as we have the triangle with a T in the middle for TACAN pop up and is stationary on the outside of the compass rows of our HSI. We also have the same information that we have for our waypoint up in the top left, but for the TACAN station. The current heading towards the TACAN station, and if we subtract 180 degrees from that current heading, that'll be the radial we're on from that TACAN station. Then we've got the DME distance, which is slant range, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have the current time it will take us to fly to that waypoint or to the TACAN station. And then the TACAN station's call sign of AKR for RAF Akrotiri. Let's go ahead and now talk about the coupled mode of the autopilot for our FA-18C Hornet. Coupled mode of the autopilot will automatically fly us to a selected waypoint or selected nav aid, like RAF Akrotiri or Waypoint 1. We can go to Autopilot, and we can now have an additional option on our Autopilot's ODU, the CPL for coupled mode. If we press that, will automatically fly us towards Waypoint 1. If we want the autopilot to automatically fly us to waypoint one and then cycle automatically towards waypoint two, we have to select a sequence of our waypoints. Sequence one button down here, if we press it and box it, will automatically sequence us to fly through the waypoints in numerical order from one to two to three to four and so on. Pressing the auto button down here and boxing auto will automatically cycle those waypoints once we fly over them. We're going to have our autopilot automatically fly us to waypoint 1. The sequence is 1 to fly us from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, and it will automatically sequence with auto's box down below. So we'll go to the autopilot options once more on the UFC, press the coupled mode, and the aircraft will automatically fly us towards waypoint one. This is a fantastic option to use when you are lost and you do not recognize the terrain you're flying over. Maybe you're battle damaged, maybe you've just gotten yourself into a dogfight and you're completely disoriented as to where you are in the battle space. Or maybe you're deleting a large formation of aircraft you need to be hands off your throttle and stick in order to manipulate systems in your aircraft, but also to keep track of and issue the orders required by the flight of aircraft to complete their mission successfully. Keep in mind that even if you have sequence one boxed down below, if you do not have automatic boxed, you will not automatically cycle through the waypoints. On the HUD here, we can see that the autopilot is in coupled mode in sequence one, so it'll sequence through the waypoint points from numerical order, and we have auto throttles turned on. Keep in mind that autopilot coupled mode will get more and more sensitive, and will start to rock the wings slightly the closer you get to your waypoint. We can see that the coupled mode on the autopilot also decided rather than flying all the way to on top of waypoint 1, it would fly by waypoint 1 and then automatically cycle to waypoint 2. So it's leading this very tight turn that we needed to make in order to bring the aircraft towards waypoint 2. If you have a waypoint that you cannot allow to be a fly-by waypoint and need to have it as a fly-over waypoint, make sure that you have autopilot coupled mode turned on with the sequence and automatic 
sequencing of the waypoints turned off. This will allow you to fly directly over the waypoint in coupled mode automatically, then which you would manually cycle to waypoint 2 and turn the autopilot coupled mode back on to cycle it automatically to fly to waypoint 2. This would only be a real concern is if you were flying a route in IMC that had mountains or other dangerous obstacles to the left or right, or you were trying to snake your way through and between various SAM threats down on the ground. So now that the aircraft is flying its way towards Waypoint 2 automatically completely hands off, let's go ahead and talk about using autopilot coupled mode while using a ground-based navigational aid like TACAN. This is going to be something that's going to really help you guys out when it comes to flying those Case 3 approaches onto the carrier by allowing you to fly a hands-off hold in the stack waiting for your actual approach time. If you guys would like me to go in depth on a tutorial on how to fly a hold in the FA-18C or to do a Case 3 approach in the FA-18C, definitely sound off in the comment section down below. So let's go ahead and open up the F-10 map and we'll find RAF Akrotiri. Tac and station is right down here. So let's go ahead and figure out a good radial for us to intercept and fly inbound on. I'm thinking the 070 radio will be a really good uh, radio for us to intercept and have autopilot coupled mode automatically fly us on in towards RAF Akrotiri. So first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and box TACAN on the top left to make TACAN our main navigational source as opposed to our INS waypoints that we currently have selected up here. We need to first turn off the coupled autopilot mode before it will allow us to box TACAN on the top left. So we'll turn off coupled mode and we can see the wings kind of relax a little bit as the aircraft is no longer trying to input any wind correction via the autopilot and keep us on track towards waypoint 2. We can now box TACAN, and without a course line or radial selected via the course select function on the top right of our MPCD pedestal, if we turn on coupled mode, the aircraft will automatically fly us directly towards the RAF Akrotiri TACAN station. This is desirable for us at the moment, so we'll get the jet facing towards RAF Akrotiri, and then we'll command it to automatically join on the 070 degree radial. Now we can see the jet is turning rather violently in the autopilot coupled mode. There's a way that we can get the jet to fly a little bit more gently and that can probably prevent you guys who are flying around in VR goggles from getting so nauseated by the jet flying around in autopilot coupled mode. We can go into the data portion of our HSI go over to the aircraft options, and then where it says TAC blim, we can switch that over to nav blim. Now the aircraft in autopilot coupled mode will be in navigational mode rather than tactical mode, and its turns and bank angles will be re reduced to a standard rate turn of two degrees per second of turn on the aircraft. In TAC blim, the aircraft will turn harder than that standard rate turn of two degrees per second. Let's go back to NavBlim and let the jet fly a little bit more gently, especially while using TACANs as the, as the navigational source for the autopilot coupled mode. I definitely recommend being in navigation mode as the aircraft won't be quite as violent in its maneuvers while trying to track a radial from a ground-based radio navigational aid. We can also turn on and off the terrain avoidance warning system so that way Betty won't be constantly saying roll left, roll up, right, pull up, pull up when you're trying to fly a nape of the earth flight through the mountains. We can also adjust the altitude, altitude warning that we get from Betty. Altitude. Altitude. Let's go ahead and bring that back down to 5,000 and we can also set a radar altitude, altitude warning if we so choose as well. 
It's good that these can be good reminders as you're coming down, descending down into the glide slope for the aircraft carrier, or down on a TACAN approach into a airbase like RAF Akrotiri. We can get back to the HSI very easily by pressing the HSI button. So before we input the course line to fly in on the 070 degree radial into RAF Akrotiri, we're gonna to wanna to first turn off the autopilot coupled mode. We're then gonna to wanna to take our 070 radial and add 180 degrees for that for our course line to give us 250 degrees. And we'll input that as our course line into the RAF Acra Tiri TACAN station. We'll press and hold on our course line function. And we can see the course that is currently selected pops up on the bottom right of our HSI. With very quick clicks, we can also adjust that in one degree increments, left and right, as we so need. Let's go ahead and press on our CESL on our option display unit and enter in 250 degrees. And now we have a course line of 250 degrees that will take us inbound to the RAF Acra Tiri TACAN station on the 070 degree radial. At this point, with that line laid out on our HSI, we are now able to open up autopilot, turn on coupled mode once again, and the aircraft will automatically fly us onto that radial inbound into the RAF Acra Tiri TACAN station. This is gonna be something that's gonna be incredibly useful for you guys flying case three approaches onto the aircraft carrier because you're going to be able to fly through IMC in those thick clouds and fly directly onto the appropriate radial assigned to you for the Marshall stack as you wait for your time to fly your approach into the carrier. We can go ahead and zoom in our scale so we can see how far away from the radial we currently are at. Looks like 20 nautical miles of scale is going to be perfect for us today. We can see we're at a DME of 60.3 nautical miles from the TACAN station. Remember how we talked about earlier that this is in slant range. This is important to note because slant range is very different from ground track range. Slant range is the direct line of sight from our aircraft to the TACAN station down there at RAF Akrotiri. Why does this matter? It's because the fact that we're up here at 15,000 feet, that's gonna show us at a DME distance of 2.5 when we fly directly over the TACAN station. This is because the way we get DME information from the TACAN station is it's a call and response system. Our aircraft is sending out a signal to the TACAN station. The TACAN station is then replying to our signal and the equipment on board our aircraft is measuring the time it takes for that signal to get to the TACAN station and then receive a reply and thus extrapolating that out into line of sight range. So DME distance or slant range distance to a TACAN station is always going to be slightly farther away than it would be if you were using ground track range like is used for waypoint navigation uh, via your INS and GPS systems in your FA-18C Hornet. We will see in just a little bit that as we fly over the RAF Acra Tiri TACAN station, our DME will drop, drop, drop to about 2.5, and then it will start expanding again as we fly over the top of it. A lot of people ask me, why, Spud, is TACAN turned off by default when you start up an FA-18 or hop into a air-started FA-18? The reason for that is because that call and response system to get DME information from the TACAN station can be tracked by bad guys to actually track and plot our course through the air by using that call and response signal that we're sending out to the TACAN station. If we turn our TACAN to receive mode, we will get the same information about the course and heading to the TACAN station, but we will no longer be receiving the DME. However, the bad guys can't track us, so this can be a good way to find the aircraft carrier without allowing the bad guys to track your position potentially, but you'll not get, be able to get that DME information, and we can see it kicked off our autopilot coupled mode and destroyed our course line. Turning transmit receive back on, our jet is now going to fly directly towards the TACAN station once again. 
but let's go ahead and input that course line again and have us fly on that 070 degree radial directly into the Akrotiri Takan station. So we'll go ahead and let her roll out. Barometric altitude hold mode is turned on. We'll put in a course line, 250 degrees, autopilot coupled mode, and the jet will automatically fly us back onto the course line. I know that it's very confusing understanding the difference between a course line and a radial. So if you guys would like me to create a tutorial focusing on the terminology of TACAN and VOR navigational aids and what the difference between a course line and a radial and what a radial is and what a course line is, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to make a tutorial to help you guys understand the differences there. We'll see that as we intercept our course line, the jet is probably going to blow right past it and then attempt to bring us back onto it. The jet is going to undulate slightly left to right as it tries to hold the course line. It's going to be very similar to then if you were flying it manually and you're kind of undulating left and right, zigzagging your way onto the course line. Then as we get closer and closer to the TACAN station, the autopilot is going to get more and more sensitive in the same way that the radials and the distance between the radials are getting closer and closer and making our navigational equipment more sensitive. So it is definitely a very funny and interesting and it's making the same kind of errors that you would make if you were flying the aircraft manually. So it's very interesting in that way. And we can now see the peninsula with RAF Akrotiri on it right out in front of us here. And we can see the jet blew past the intercept and is now attempting to re-cage the 070 degree radial. There we go. It now knows that it's back on the course line. It now has to bring our heading back to that 250 degrees to keep us right on the 070 radial. While the system can fly us inbound on a particular radial into the tag end station, it can also allow us to fly outbound from that particular station on a particular radial. This is where it's really going to help those guys who are flying those Case 3 approaches on the aircraft carrier. Because it really doesn't matter which radial you approach the carrier from unless ATC from the carrier gives you a specific radial to approach on. But what really matters is the outbound radial at which you fly on to go out to get into your place in the Marshall stack. But let's go ahead and speed up time. And we can see the jet just slowly undulating left and right as it attempts to maintain the 070 degree radial. We can see the jet's not flying directly on the 250 degree heading into the station. And that's because it's probably accounting for some wind drift that we have up here. All right, so again, DME is based off of slant range. So we're going to see the DME count down more and more and more on the HUD until it reaches 2.5 DME, because at 15,000 feet will be exactly 2.5 nautical miles over the top of the Tacan station. And we can see the jet just got very confused as we flew directly over the top of the TACAN station. And it's now flying us outbound on the 250 degree radial away from the TACAN station. 
So let's say we're flying, just flew over the top of our carrier, and we need the jet to fly us on the 270 degree radial for our Marshall stack. We just adjust the course line to 270 degrees, and now the aircraft will automatically fly us outbound on the 270 degree radial. You might wonder why, Spud, is the aircraft flying past the 270 degrees point for the heading? Remember, a course line is not the same as a heading. We, the aircraft must attempt to regain and fly on top of this line. And so to get there, the jet had to fly past 270 degrees to get on top of the 270 degree radial. Alrighty guys, I hope this tutorial hasn't confused you more when it comes to navigational systems of aircraft. A lot of the stuff we covered today is not just about military aircraft, but also covers civilian aircraft as well. VOR and TACAN are very, very similar systems. If you guys liked the video and enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something from it, definitely give us a like and a subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Please fly safe out there, guys, whether you're flying F-18s and DCS or 747s and Microsoft Flight Simulator. And definitely stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one.